Hey y'all, I'm Tris. I'm Liz. And I'm Sean the Don. And we are The Collective. And we have a podcast. Culture 101. Where each week we talk about all manner of topics in black culture. From the hottest issues to the most bizarre. And have a damn good time doing it. So check us out every Friday where you get your podcast. Culture Culture 101 101 Podcast. Podcast. Moving the culture forward one episode at a time. Stay tuned. Stay locked in. I like that little stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. They say you guys may not be Times Square, but y'all sure know how to have a ball. And to that, we say hell yeah. <laughs> and cute. guess what, guys? It is New Year's Eve as we record this episode. So mm-hmm. shout out to all you New Year's lovers out there. And shout out to you New Year's haters. You know, the New Year's coming whether you <laughs> like it or not. So it's just what it is, y'all. I'm ready for it. Let's go. As you I'm should. I'm with be. the old and with the new. Talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> but not too new. Cause don't bring me no new scotch. I need that shit old. I need it old. Old. Oh, old. That's fair. You sound old. Oh, but look, you know what? You want to drink some some year old scotch, or you want to drink some twenty five year old scotch? Or maybe you're not drinking scotch at all. But yeah, whatever. Nah. Drinking scotch like that. Neither. That's fair. Really, that's you. that's fair. Today, guys, we have yet another entrant into the Tubi movie hierarchy. Another fantastic film. This is a film of my choosing, and the title of this film is called The Get Back. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, get back. Yes, that's right. Feels good to me. <laughs> the director of this film is Jared Cohn. The film was released in 2023. And the main actor in this movie is Theo Rossi. You may know him as Shades from Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. If, mm-hmm. You, if you watch Luke Cage. But we're going to jump right into it, guys. So the overview of this movie is simply that there is a bail bondsman, um, well, or rather a bounty hunter who works for a bail bondsman who was sent on a big job to retrieve a high priority witness. And, of course, double crosses and action ensues. So let's jump right into it. The beginning of the movie starts with a poker game, right? There's this high-stakes poker game. A lot's going on. Money's changing hands. Seedy characters around the table. This is the real deal. Armed guards. All of a sudden, our man busts in the door. And he's like, look, I'm taking somebody with me. And they're like, what the fuck? Why are you even here? And the guy at the table's like, he's here for me. And they're like, oh, we found out this man's a bounty hunter. And we find out his name is Maul Cooper. He's an ex-cop. And he's an ex-cop because he beat up a senator's son. But he beat up a senator's son because that son was a rapist. So, you know, he's, mm-hmm. he's a tortured hero. So that's, that's, that's our man, Coop. And they call him, his mama called him Coop. I'm going to call him Coop. Now, so he ends up getting the guy, right? And when he gets the guy, the guy tries to to pull a gun real quick and he shoots him in the leg. You know, that's not ideal because you got to bring that guy back, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And then as he's going out, the lady presiding over the car game offers him a job. And she's like, do you want to keep dealing with this shit? And then he drops his catchphrase. I like this shit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep doing it. So shout out to him. So now we have a meeting with his his boss, the bail bondsman, the owner of the bail bonds company, Rogan. And Rogan offers him a job to pick up this guy named Jake Gordon, who is a star witness for Al for Al- Alonzo Beaumont. I said Alfonso the first time. Yeah, I keep I don't know why I think it's Alfonso, but it's <laughs> I mean, Al- Alonzo well, Beaumont. Alfonso is close enough. <laughs> Blood in there. Anyway, so He's like, yo, we're going to go. I need you to go get Jake. We said, how much? 25 large. Damn, 25 large? That was like three times what he made for the last guy. So he was like, damn, I got to go do it. And then we realized that he's lonely, too, because his plans were to go and hang out at his ex-wife's apartment. Because that's where he used to live. That's where he used to live. So Mm -hmm. in his mind, he's just, you know, enjoying the space. But shout out to him for, you know, the brooding man that he is. So... Of course, as any good ex-cop will do, they go back to their precinct to get information to find these people. And so then we go, we meet his ex-partner, Hatch, um, lovely black lady, shout out to her. And, you know, he's there. And then, of course, as he's there, of course, his police chief sees him. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Every time I look around the corner, you in the corner. And so, so then they have some words. And so then the police chief actually wants to talk to him and offers him his job back. And he's like, well, you, but he said, so, but what, what's the catch? Well, the catch is you have to apologize to that kid still. He's like, you know what? And he said, you can stop doing this shit. And, and of course he drops that catchphrase again. I like this shit. And he bounces out the door. 
Mm-hmm. So then we fast forward to a prison. Now you're wondering why we're in a prison because now we're looking at Alonzo Beaumont, right? And there's an attempt on his life. People come at him and he's like, look, tell your boss if they want to come at me, you know where I am. So he's a bad motherfucker. So we just need to know. So we need to give respect to Alonzo Beaumont. I don't want to see him in a dark alley. I just don't. <laughs> so, okay. So then now, now we fast forward now. Now we found Jay Gordon. He's at a hotel and he's going by this name, Kyle. And so then all of a sudden this lady comes in and now they're about to get down. They're about to have some, some sex scenes. And now this lady brought him some passports and some money. So this is like his bottom lady, I guess. I don't know. Not it wasn't really lady. clear what their relationship was. But either way, that's what's going on. So then, of course, there's a room service alert. And of course, it's not room service. It's Coop. And Coop is there in that ass. He's like, look, let's go. He said, how did you? And he's like, how did you find me? He said, well, I followed your fiance. And then I know you have two other girlfriends. And now the lady's all like, I can't believe it. You know? And so then, of course, they, uh, but then, of course, assassins come for them and they bolt. And then she's like, call me. I'm like, damn, girl, you, you changed your tune real quick. But whatever, good for her. Anyway, so then the so then the assassins come and they find out the assassin that was after them is a cop or was a cop. And they're like, oh my God. And so then he just tells them to drive south. So they just start on their way. So then Coop calls his his partner Hatch and he's like, So what's going on with this cop? Well, he was he's not a cop now. He was a cop. He's like, okay, something's not adding up. So then, so then now they're trying to put those pieces together, but they're still driving. Mm-hmm. Then we see Lonzo talk to the lawyer and he's like, and the lawyer's talking to him in prison. And he's like, well, everything's going according to plan. And I was like, well, that can't be because everything looks like it is awry right now. But hold on to that. So they get to a motel and he locks them to the bedpost, of course. And so then they're, they're in there, they're catching up a little bit, little by little, trying to, you know, trying to bond with each other. So then now we're at the next morning. So now the next morning, uh, Coop wakes up and Jake's no longer in the room. He's like, what the fuck? He escaped. Oh, my God. And he comes out of the room to turn around. And Jake is walking up with donuts. That's just a nice <laughs> guy Jake is. He didn't even leave. He could have been in Timbuktu somewhere. But he brought this man donuts and coffee. And then, much to the chagrin of both these men, another attempt on their lives. Mm-hmm. More men come to kill them. And, yo, my man uh, Coop handles them. He takes care of business. Like he mm-hmm. is dropping people left and right. I thought he was uh, Richard Bronson the way he was killing people. Shit was insane. <laughs> so now we start learning more and more about Boma. We start learning more and more about Jake, right? And we learn that Jake's mother's birthday is very is coming up very soon. So he wants to call his mother and he's like, chill out. And then he's like, well, he's like, look, man, you know what you did. That's why I'm taking you in. He's like, well, I don't understand. Why would I want to go in? And why would I flip on my boss? He said, that didn't make any sense at all. He's like, I think you need to get your story straight. Come to find out the witness that Jake is, the the witness that Jake is, he is testifying on behalf of Beaumont. So he needs Jake alive to get Beaumont out of jail. So we're like, huh? He said, didn't the bail bondsman tell you this? And then he's starting to realize something's fishy with Rogan. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. So that's the first thing. But of course, you know, if they're in a car, you know what has to happen now. The obligatory car chase. Mm-hmm. And so then there's a car. And you know what? This car chase was pretty decent. Somebody it made was. this car chase. I assume it was cigarette companies because everybody was smoking in the movie. Huh. So I just assume that's who paid for it. But whatever. Maybe. You know. And so then we get more backstory about both men after the car chase crash and fight that ensues. Mm-hmm. And we find out that um, he was a cop and, you know, he his father was a chef and we find out that he had more in, his mother was a cop and he became, that's why he became a cop because mm-hmm. he just had more in common there and then he was a great cop and then he found out that this senator's son had drugged some woman in a car and raped her and he and then he just got enraged and broke his nose and then of course after that the senator didn't like that and blackballed him and then that's where we are now so now they find the gas station cuz now they've bonded now they've become a bit of a unit and we find a gas station and they're like, damn, we need to make a phone. And then there's this old man with a shotgun. Always an old man with funny. a shotgun at a gas station. Couldn't, couldn't write this better myself. Mm-hmm. And so then they go there and the man is ready to like blast their heads. He's like, look, you, you got to buy something. He's like, wait a minute, you telling me to buy something and you're going to shoot me? I just don't know <laughs> which one you want. Like, I'm going to need you to, to, to figure something out here. Long story short, they, they uh, disarm him and they end up do buying something. But now they become friends with this old man. The old man's name is Gus. 
right? Mm-hmm. And so Gus gives them a place to sleep, a place to recoup, lick their wounds. And then this is so then now they're running out of options. They don't know where to turn. So Coop calls Rogan. He said, Rogan, I understand that normally I'm supposed to bring you the people, but I need you to come pick us up. And then, okay, during that time while they're recuperating, we find out about all about Jake's mother with Alzheimer's and everything and how she's at an assisted living facility because he actually does get to make that call because he doesn't think he's even going to get to see her because her birthday is the very next day. Now, it is the very next day now. It's morning time. Rogan pulls up. Rogan looks nervous. He pull, and he pulls up in a sweet Cadillac, too. I just want to shout out to that Cadillac. Had a nice paint job. Very sweet car. <laughs> so he gets out the car, and he's looking around, looking at his watch. He's like, hey, man, come on. We, we need to go. And he's like, well, you keep looking at your watch. Why are you looking at your watch? Because Coop is confronting him now. And he's like, what you doing? What's going on here? I don't understand why you're looking at your watch. You're supposed to be here. Did you sell us out? You son of a bitch. You sold us out. And of course, as soon as he says that, Rogan dies. They pop Rogan right on the spot. Pop, pop. It's showtime. More men come to kill these men. More men come. Three or four of them. Automatic weapons. And guess what? They handle all of them. They handle all of them. But then this time, Jake gets triumphant. It hits somebody with a baseball bat. You know, Gus shoots somebody. It's just, it's a fucking kill party. It's crazy. <laughs> but, they, but they get it done. They get it done, and they get on the road. So now they go to visit Jake's mom. Because they're like, we might as well. Nobody's checking for us there, which I thought was stupid. Because I was just like, what are you, why are we going there? But whatever. They go to Jake's mom's place. It's her birthday. She has all the time. She's not going to remember it anyway. So uh, they go in there. To go, what? She wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> so she can't tell nobody. So uh, then they go in right. there to go see Jake's mom. And they go talk. And Jake's mom, she's, she's doing okay. But she, of course, she has a moment where she forgets her own son. Heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Heartbreaking. And so then as they're leaving, two more assassins come in. And these they assassins are in the business. Hey, they they kill four break. nurses. I'm like, God damn. Y'all yeah. killing nurses? Like, I understand. Right. Hey, she know. was minding her business at the front desk. Didn't nobody hey, come to work I understand they kill a few old residents. They were going to die anyway. But like, Just you're going to kill the nurses. These are young people. Terrible. Them old terrible. residents belong to a family. Right. And at some point, you know, they will. You, I'm just saying it'll be it'll be cheaper than the, the funeral arrangements. That's all I'm saying. Oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> Lord. Oh man, I'm just saying it could have been. You never know. It would have been an interesting twist. We love our yeah. elders. We do. We do. We love you. We love you guys. Thank you. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> so, so so now during this fight, it 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 escalates, right? So they're fighting in the nursing home. Bullets are flying all throughout the nursing home. And then this time, Jake shoots somebody. Oh my God. Jake has, has stepped up, grabbed a gun with a silencer, and popped him. Shit mm-hmm. was crazy, man. But they get but they kill all the assassins, don't take a hit, and they get out of there. So then they have another police chase. They have another uh another chase Cart. because mm-hmm. the police ended up chasing them as soon as they leave the car they get in the assassin's car and the police just pull up and the police start chasing them which i thought was a little strange because it's like why the police chase us we were just accosted but whatever it is what it is so they end up losing the police and they get out of there and they end up going to his ex-wife's apartment and he told gus to send his partner a message and said hey i'm going to go watch a movie and i'm gonna go home or whatever he said and basically, that was the signal that I'm going to my ex-wife's apartment. Hatch, meet me there. So they go to the apartment. They meet Hatch there. And they start talking a little bit more. And Hatch starts filling them in and giving them all the pieces. So he's like, and so then they tell, and then he tells Hatch and Coop, Jake tells them what he was going to testify. And he was going to testify that at the drop where they said Alonzo killed two cops, he did not kill two cops. The cop that was there killed the two police officers and set him up for it so they're like whoa did you see the cop's face he said i don't know the man's name but if i saw him in a lineup i could definitely point out who that cop was to you so hold on to that so now it's the next morning people are eating breakfast shit's shit's sweet and we're thinking man we're they're good this thing this is really gonna happen of course there's a knock at the door and he's like don't open that don't no one knows we're here it's fine i told the captain that we were here why would you tell the captain <laughs> and of course as soon as she opens the door hatch is done pop mm-hmm. pop pop few bullets to the liver she's done that was terrible it, it was terrible i didn't want hash to die that wig was terrible too man but, what we gonna get but, on that but we'll get we'll get back to that you know you choose a part you choose a, a fucked up wig you know what's gonna happen to you in these movies me anyway 
So, like, I'm gonna tell you the. We'll get back. We'll get back. I promise. We'll get back. <laughs> so, so then they're like, "Oh my god, what are we gonna do? This is insane." So then they're like, "So then, but then, but then, the guy that kills Hatch is one of the police officers that used to he used to work with." So now you're realizing, wow, this plot is really starting to get thick. And so then, after they kill that guy, Cooper's like, "Is this the cop?" He's like, "No, that's not him." He's like, damn, there's so many dirty cops in the unit. So then they go out to the garage trying to get into the car. And then as they're getting there, they kill somebody else. And then Coop gets shot, shot right in the stomach. And you're thinking, damn, Coop is done. And guess who emerges out of nowhere? The police chief himself. And of course, Jake is like, that was the cop. Of course it was the cop. Of course. He, He can't even believe it. He's like, this is crazy. And Beaumont is right now being moved, ready for the trial, waiting for for this to happen. So if Jake doesn't get there, Beaumont's going to go back to jail. So all of this is happening at the time. And the chief is like, look, how did it get this bad? He's like, look, you do one thing and then you just fall down a hole. It's the same old story. So Adam, so in just a moment when he's about to kill Jake, you know what happens. Coop finds his strength, pulls that gun out, pop, pop. The chief goes down mm-hmm. for the count. And so now fast forward, Coop wakes up in the hospital and he's like, what? 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 What happened? Like the case? What happened? And guess who's in the hospital with Coop? Nobody but Alonzo Beaumont and one of his guards. He's like, "Yo, what the fuck? What? What you doing here?" He's like, "He said thank you. He said I really appreciate you. Here's the money. Here's seventy five grand." He said seventy five grand. The contract was only for twenty five. Well, that's what I was gonna give to Rogan for you to get him. He said, "Rogan, that lying son of a bitch." Well, Rogan's dead, so it's fine. Right. And so he's like, "I can't even take the money." He's like, "Why can't you take this money? Because of you, I got a mistrial." He said, "They had to dismiss my trial because of the information that you provided to the chief about the chief." He said, "It's okay." He said, "So maybe you want to come work for me then?" He said, "And get out of this shit." And you know what he says? I love this shit. Mm-hmm. In some real gangster way, and then he just leaves the money on the bed, and they walk out. He better and than that, me. And that concludes the get back. Hey y'all, it's your girl Sean the Don, and I'm here to tell y'all that we now have merch up live. You can find some t-shirts, you can find puzzles, you can find candles, whatever you want. We got it. Come check us out at Culture One Hundred One Podcast dot com. You might be surprised to know that not all serial killers are straight, cisgender white men. And the victims of true crime are not a monolith either. She's Wendy and I'm Beth. And together we host Fruit Loop Serial Killers of Color, a true crime podcast. Together we take deep dives into the true crime stories about marginalized and minoritized perps and victims that often go untold. We also provide the context and nuance that these stories deserve. At Fruit Loops, we're serving up true crime with a side of history, society, culture, culture, and some fun. Listen to Fruit Loop Serial Killers of Color on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Yes, indeed. Action-packed, Ooh. buddy comedy, bell bondsman in the spirit of Midnight Run and such like that. Um, fantastic film. I enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a 3.5. I am. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Feels solid. I wasn't upset while watching it. Made me feel good. Um, not as good as other films of that genre, but good times. Ladies, what do we think of it? Um, I thought it was a good movie. I was, you know, entertained. I feel like um, as soon as I saw like the cover poster and like the beginning scenes, I recognized um, the main two actors from other like Netflix stuff. Like you said, Luke Cage, and then um, the black guy had been in some movies uh, from the After series that I watches based on books but anyway that's neither here nor there um also the chief is one of my favorite actors because i grew up loving him he's um he played in my best friend's wedding and my mom used to watch that's right all um, the time <laughs> Mulderney um, or something like that yeah, he's been a lot Dermot, of he's been a lot of movies Mulroney. uh-huh he's been in a lot so i was like mm-hmm. okay this this seems to be a good cast i can get into it um i feel like it had a good like plot i feel like the fight scenes were actually good they were decent they weren't like you know your typical tubi where it looks like terrible and stuff's not connecting and it just looks you know bootleg or whatever um the little plot that cigarette money that Uh cigarette money Mm -hmm. the plot twist with the chief it wasn't like so out of you know the ordinary is like you know there's crooked cops and crooked was it chiefs. really a twist i mean we knew the chief that's what i'm saying that's what i'm like i was like it's not out of like the blue type of stuff um but i thought it was a good plot good story shout out to tretch uh 
he did a good job as well in his scene. So um, overall, I enjoyed it. I was entertained. It kept my attention. It looked good as far as like the cinematography. And this is your lane, Tristan, if you want to get more into that. So overall, I feel like I would give it a 3.5 as well. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, Tristan, for once. I'm right there with you. All right. I like it. Okay, like 3.5. So do I have to do a 3.5 to average it out? Let's, let mean, me go with a 3.5 would... too. You know what I'm saying? Average it out across Ooh. the board. Um, for a non-original <laughs> story, like, I mean, obviously it's too big. It's not going to be that original. Mm-hmm. But, like, because we've seen the story of the um, Bill Bondman and Bounty Hunter situation happen mm-hmm. before. So it wasn't like Have you seen Midnight original. Rock? No, no, but I mean, this has been told before. Well, Midnight Run was one of the first movies to really kind of popularize that. And that was back mm-hmm. when the 80s with De Niro. It's a good movie. You should watch it. It's on Netflix mm-hmm. now. I don't know if I've seen it. What, what, I've seen probably two other movies that were very similar with mm-hmm. this like plot. But overall, great to be quality. So I'm, I'm going to have to agree with 3.5. We have to deduct points for Whoa. that terrible week. For the wig. <laughs> Well, that's why it's not a four. That's why right. it's not a four. I'm not deducting points from 3.5. I'm saying okay. 2.5 okay. because... I was like, damn, we deducted more points? My God. No, but Gus made up for that because Gus was hilarious. I really appreciated his uh, c- comedic timing. Like, Gus, Gus was just funny to me. Uh-huh. He was just so funny to me. <laughs> I like um, Gus. I like Rogan, too. Rogan was hilarious yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, Rogan yeah. Rogan was mm-hmm. great. He definitely gave smarmy bell bondsmen from, oh, the, from sure. the jump. For sure, you know. he looked like he smelled like a Bell's Bond. But anyway, shout out to well, Bell's Bond. Because he was trying to go double bubble. That was his problem. He was <laughs> trying to go double bubble. Bell's Bond's in real life. I mean, why did you need right, to go somebody don't... out? Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you talking to Bell's yeah. I mean, not not even like in the We're world. Just like, a like being yeah, in the, like, well, in who do you profession? know that is out here bailing people out? I'm talking but she's about just saying like, like she don't have no friends who have yeah. like, right, and that's what I'm saying. I'm still asking you the same question. Who do you know that's out here bailing people out? I just meet random people every day. What do you mean? You know, you right, meet random like, people with random careers. Like, oh, I do this, I, get I do that. that. But like, Nothing I'll give you a good example. Like, how many FBI agents do you know? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's right. a bunch of professions. You know some? Three? I mean, she is in a DMV, so that makes sense. That's a good point. I did know a couple when I lived there. That's a good point. And I guess I never <laughs> really met a Bill Bond. No, I did meet a Bill Bondsman once. I did, yes. Back when I was like, maybe like 23. 20, no, I had like 20, 22, 23. Yeah, this is around the time I was, I was, well, I was canvassing. Yeah, yeah, I was canvassing. Mm. And then so I, I met like, a Bill yeah, Bondsman. I'm a Bill Right, we talked about it. He's like, yeah, I'm a bell bondsman. And but actually, he was a pastor, too. He was trying to get me to come to his church. Aww, and I remember hard. that. Yes, yes. Trying to save souls out here. A- apparently, more than one way. Mm-hmm. So, That's such a combination. Mm-hmm. Well, it made sense. It, like, mm-hmm. if you met the guy, it made it definitely made sense. Like, it made, well, like, it was, it, was t- it was totally right. It was on par with everything he was, he was talking about. So That sounds about right. <laughs> so, but I guess we have to ask that question now. Does it do it for the culture? I think so. I think it had a good mixture of actors in it. It wasn't just, you know, a solely black cast, but um, I appreciated it. I think it does it for the culture. I'm going to have to second Leslie's um, critique and say, yeah. I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Yes, as well. Because if nothing else, I felt like this is like today. I we are, we are telling the line. It's a beautiful We're, thing. We are in alignment going into the new year. Look at As us. As we should be. That's called balance. It. That's called okay. balance is what that is. I love it. But, lo- but like on the lowest of keys, I felt like this was like a, Lu- a Luke Cage like side story. It felt like before that. Shade started working for, for them, this is, this is what he <laughs> was like doing. like a prequel. <laughs> right, right, right. It gave like a little, little a Luke, Luke Cage, Cage side quest. And I was here for it because I felt like it was the same quality of like production and everything too. So, mm-hmm. Tristan, I ain't going to lie. You had a good pick this time. I this was a good that. pick. I, I approve of this one. We had some gutter paws, but I'm glad we ended the year <laughs> with a great one. I feel like my shaky. last my last few picks have been like on par. They've been they've been. What up was there. your last one? I don't even remember what was last. The, one. How you gonna make that safe house? It was safe house. Oh, safe house. I didn't say no. And then I did, and then accused was what I accused was good. Accused was really good, and then we had like midnight hustle. It's always gonna come back to Midnight Hustle for you. You love you some Midnight, Midnight Hustle. Midnight Hustle was just dope. It's, like, no, it's just called Hustle, right? And it's just it's called, called Midnight Hustle. It's called Midnight Hustle. Oh, okay, Midnight okay, okay. Hustle. Mm. 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 You love him some Midnight Hustle. Right. Right. So now, so now, in the spirit of these reviews, I feel like I gotta ask a question about about the movie, about about the characters. 
So do we feel like Jake had no other alternative other than to turn into a life of crime? Like, do we feel like there were other alternatives for Jake? Because it just seemed like, like he just, like, it just seems like he was a pretty good accountant that you were able to hide all that money. So like, you didn't, like, was there nothing else? There was no other way? It's probably a slippery slope from going from accountant to a life of crime, I feel like, depending on the type of accountant, the type of people you're around, who you're doing accounting for. It's probably just like... One, said, one, accountants is a gateway. I'm just gateway saying, one, one false move and you in that life. Man. One you false you move. She said. She said <laughs> you. You. Man. She said you. You doctored some figures one time and she's like, it's over after and that. Now you in it. You, you can't, can't go back. You but know? you can. You ain't got to keep doing it. Once you on the wrong side of IRS, it's hard to get back on the good side. I That's mean, all I'm he, saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not afraid of the IRS. This is not with it, like who Baby, I fear. Maybe they some gangsters with it. They're not gonna come in shooting. They may come take your shit. They're not gonna come in shooting. Also, they may shoot to when get people your... get in trouble with the IRS, don't you go to like a better jail? Um, the you are supposed to go to yeah. Do. It'll be federal, but like it will be like a, a minimum security prison. Yes, the rich white people do. Uh, we gotta ask Wesley Snipes where he went. You know, Lauren Hill, like as you know, I'm sure in one of the best jails. Does Wesley actually go to jail? I can't remember. Did he? I thought his sentence was suspended. I don't really know, but I didn't think he was actually up. in prison. Oh, yeah. Yeah. like I know they were threatening him with it, and he had to work out some type of payment plan or whatever. But is that why Martha so. Stewart was in jail? Why was she in white people jail? She was into jail for insider trading. Yeah, <sighs> they gave a tip, and she played that. Yeah, and she played that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of them insider trade. She just got caught. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say I. I- but what's really crazy is that I felt like that was probably one of the best things for her career. Like everybody it was talking her. about it. It, it, gave her, it gave her Started street cred. Started getting a show with, with Snoop Dogg and shit. It right. gave her street cred. Like and it did. Was like, it gave oh, her a lot of cred. Cool. Like Martha. forever. Like Martha Stewart has lived quite a life. She was a model, a supermodel at that. Like internationally, she was a homemaker. Like was able to turn. Like has her own line of products and stuff. Went to jail, got tats, came out. Now she's friend with Snoop. I'm just saying, Martha has lived. She quite did a not life. get tats in jail, did she? Really? You don't know what tats she got. You ain't gonna see them. You ain't gonna see them. But she got a tat. I thought that is was she... like a known fact. I was about to really scream. She got a tat, man. Got a jailhouse tat too. Is she one of the ones that the black community will like protect at all costs? No, I don't know. if We're gonna protect her at nah. all costs, but she's definitely invited to many functions. Who are your she top three? Top three dead or alive at this point that black people are like, no, we gonna protect them at all costs. I know Betty White was one. She gone, so it don't matter. No. I just said dead or alive. Dead or alive. That's real, but like if you did, like what I can't okay, protect okay, you. Okay, okay, alive. I can't still protect alive? you in the afterlife. It's, it's... Who's still alive that you top three that you be like, nah? Uh, I'm gonna ride for Ryan Reynolds. I like Ryan Reynolds a lot. I like okay. him. Um, he's not too problematic, right, cool. and I feel like he, I feel like he wants to be an ally. He doesn't quite know how. But I didn't I, him and Blake get married on the plantation though. Yeah. Why people get married? Well, so a, lot a lot of white people, yeah. Why people get married? A lot of people. I can't. I can't do much about that. Uh, maybe, maybe they said a blessing over the souls of black ancestors. Child. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm I like gonna go. Um, that might the list might stop there. The list might stop. I like there. Reba one. Name a couple of white people. Reba. Um, I guess Lu- Luka Doncic. Maybe I like him a lot. He's dope. No idea who that oh, is. The basketball player. He's a basketball player. You know. Uh, I'm gonna go with Reba Kelly Clarkson. Reba, who's uh, that one fine white lady? Um, who? Bryce Dallas Howard. No. Oh, she's beautiful. Though. Damn. Scarlett Johansson. I love her name, Bryce Dallas. That's so cute to me. Scar- Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson is a fine white lady. Yeah, mm. but like you say, because she's bad, not because like we just protect. I like, don't know it's anything she about her life, so maybe she cool. Don't know. Yeah, I think the list might be really short on this. It, one. Yeah, I'm right. sure it is. I'm, I'm done sure now. That's all I have. Kelly, like, I Cle- Kelly Clarkson at the top of my list. I love me some Kelly. She can do no wrong in my eyes. I, I don't know exactly where anything. I want to put her, but like she can come to a couple functions for sure. What's that sure. white comedian, man? Oh, Gary Owens. Gary Owens. Y'all like nah. that was the only white comedian you were talking about. That could be the only yeah, one. Yeah, that's the only one I know. He got black kids, so I feel like we got to protect him just by default. But. He loved him some black women, child. He be cheating. Why would he not? I, Why would, I was just about to say that. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, who wouldn't? I mean, so, you um, heard what his father told him. He's like, "Why don't you come back to the light?" He was like, "I'm cool in the shade." I can't. I was like, "That's real. That's super I real." Can't. So I get it. 
But all right, guys, we we we've riffed, we've we've rambled, we've reminisced, <laughs> and now it's time for us to get up out of here, guys. So please remember to like, subscribe, uh, check us out, you know, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you were trying to reach out to us and ask us about other Tubi movies or just want to chat with us and shoot the shit, how would they do that, Liz? You can do that a number of ways. Uh, first, you can always shoot us a comment or a DM or any of our socials. You can email us directly at contact at culture101podcast.com. Or you can go ahead and send us a listener letter on our website. It's culture101podcast.com. Just scroll all the way down on the bottom page and let us know if you want to be anonymous or not, because Tristan will read your name on the show. Absolutely. And I will relish in it and maybe have a wicked laugh while I do it. Oh, gosh. (laughs) But, Sean, if um, they were looking to to buy some merch and they wanted to give some gifts in this new year and get fresh in the new year, (laughs) how would they do that? I was supposed to go after that. Right. Like, what? (laughs) It's like (laughs) the laugh was stuck for a second (laughs) in her throat. (laughs) I just didn't want to finish it because, you know, I don't want to get too wicked for for our listeners. Okay. Well, if you're looking for some Culture 101 merch, you can find it at culture101podcast.com forward slash shop. We got everything that you're looking for for this new holiday season. Start 2024 off with the right gifts for anybody in your life. All right, all right, y'all. Well, until the next time, y'all, we out of here. Happy New Year. Bye.